Oh, we're ready? Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to One Million Cups Westminster. We are, uh, the mission of Westminster is, of One Million Cups is to lower the barrier to access for education, resources, uh, connections for entrepreneurs uh, in our community. Uh, the mission does not get accomplished without the these pillars. Presentations, not pitches, so you're here to you know, just give us a sense of you know what you're working on. Connection, not networking, making a real deep connection in our community culture for the community by the community. Nobody has ownership of one MC Westminster, and nobody is paid to do one MC Westminster. We are also radically inclusive. Uh, the core program design every week. Uh, we meet once a week on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Two presenters whenever possible. Today we have one. If there's not two presenters, well, oftentimes we'll do community updates. Uh, presenter organizations must be less than five years old and willing to ask for help. Ending with the question, we always end with the question, what can we do as a community to help you? This is our organizing team, Graham Dodge, myself, Vicki Slinkman, John Wheatman, Tina Thomas, Julie Snap, Gabby Rose. Okay. That's it. And so today's presenter is from Reform Salon. It is Heather Lawson. Heather Lawson, come on down. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So yes, I'm Heather Lawson from Reform Salon. Just opened um, this past March. Um, I'm going to read you a little story. <clears throat> Picture. No, this is for women, not for men. But <laughs> you have it. You have an appointment to get your hair done at 4 p.m. When you arrive, you notice your stylist is working on the client before you. The receptionist tells you that she's running 15 minutes behind. Your stylist finally finishes, finishes, walks over and greets you with a big smile on her face. Little do you know, she's been with the client since 9 a.m., has had two color transformations, a haircut, a blowout, two kids' cuts, and a men's cut. <clears throat> Um, uh, she's been a therapist, a punching bag, used her apron as a barf bag, one of those kids, <laughs> <laughs> and her sleeve to wipe someone's tears. She also hasn't had time to use the restroom. She's starving and really needs some water, but she's running a little behind, so she graciously walks you to her chair. When it's your time to get rinsed, the shampoo tech gives you an amazing scalp massage and magically removes all the <clears throat> color from your scalp. You are her 13th shampoo of the day. She doesn't earn an hourly wage for those hours she's been at the salon, unfortunately. She is a salon, in the salon's apprentice program and assists the stylist all day and has the opportunity to receive tips, which doesn't always happen. This program can last from six to 12 months. On slower days at the salon, she has independent class and mannequin time for one to two hours. Then her duties are cleaning until her shift is over, again, without out an hourly wage. Unfortunately, these two salon scenarios are very common in traditional commission salons. I know because I've seen it and I've lived it. So welcome to Reform Salon. Reform Salon is a community of artists devoted to creating transcendent beauty for all. We salon differently. Reform Salon offers a new way, a new way for stylists to empower themselves as artists and business owners. Focused on helping our guests reform the way they feel about themselves and reforming salon industry standards by creating a safe, freedom-based work environment for our employees. A little bit about me. Again, my name is Heather Lawson. I've been in the industry for 15 years, and I'm a cutting specialist or a razor snake. <laughs> <laughs> I am extremely passionate about the salon industry and the personal and professional growth of hairstylists. I always said I'd never own a salon. I'm a wife and a mother of two. Um, I'm a lover of travel, music, nature, and the ocean, and an avid fossil hunter. Okay. Okay. This is our why. To have a positive, disruptive impact on the salon industry. Elevating hairdressers personally and professionally. Daily harmful chemical exposure. Typical fear-based leadership that leads to toxic work environments. To prove that commission hair salons can be a safe place to grow, to work and grow. Hairdressers are expected to create masterpieces on limited time without proper compensation. 
Gone are the days of simple gray coverage and highlights. The books requested by clients these days involve much more time, skill, education, and product usage. Not appropriately charging is keeping hairdressers' incomes just above the poverty line. And being a hairdresser is very physically and emotionally demanding, which in a lot of cases calls for burnout. How we differ from other fashion salons. By empowering stylists, we focus on freedom, uh, giving them freedom in their schedule, um, taking time off. We really focus on taking as much time off as possible for your mental health and physical health. Um, set our own hourly price, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, to specialize in services they choose, we're not forcing them to do every single service under the sun. Um, to work in other salons and freelance, we do not believe in competition. Um, we approach, or no, we coach on creating boundaries to reduce unnecessary stressors. And we focus on elevating our skills as artists and focus less on product sales. We do not hold our stylists to sales benchmarks. Um, and we offer a fair and equal commission pay structure. Time-based gratuity-free pricing. A lot of people get confused on this. Um, we don't price a la carte services. We do it by time, and gratuity is included with it. Uh, so it's very simple. It is a simplified and honest and transparent way to, to, to charge. We charge an all-inclusive hourly rate, meaning everything that needs to be done to achieve the client's hair goals is included. And because we charge by time, we do not double book. So this allows our stylists to focus one-on-one -on -one with each client. Um, gratuity is built into time-based pricing. There's no need uh, for clients to add anything extra. And time-based pricing allows the stylists more control of their income by charging their worth and not relying on gratuity. Uh, emotional intelligence and leadership. So we believe in um, emotional intelligence as the foundation for success. Um, and I study a lot, um, a lot about emotional intelligence. We have monthly stylist coaching calls um, called you and me, or coaching called you and me's, where we discuss our strengths and struggles, focusing on goal setting, boundaries, reactive system, vessel growth, self-awareness, and risk management, and a lot more. Um, a positive change for our industry. Our goal is to have a positive, disruptive impact on the salon industry in hopes to eliminate typical fear-based and toxic leadership practices. Our goal is to elevate the salon industry and the mindset of stylists and salon owners to take control of their businesses. Shifting our mindset from just service providers back to artists and craft hairdressers. And absolutely no zero, or zero not compete contracts. Um, we're certified sustainable and low tox. So we recycle 95% of our salon waste through um, green service salons. We use uh, original mineral Rotox hair color that is ammonia, PPD, and resource mineral free. Um, we only we use only clean Rotox hair products as well, manufactured by independent companies. Independent companies. We choose to support independent product companies that use affiliate links. We do not stop until uh, these products also also made with clean, low, or no tox ingredients. Um, we refuse to compete with big brand companies that no longer support hairdressers and independent hair salons. Gender affirming, as supporters of the LBGTQIA community, we are gender affirming salon that is a safe space for everybody. Um, we offer gender free haircutting and coloring. We also offer gender uh, neutral pricing. So that's what's great about time based pricing. It's, you know, it's not about anyone's sex. Um, and we are fully inclusive. Community, community over competition. We are a welcoming place for all. We save space for non-binary and transgender folks and volunteering our time and also donating a percentage of our revenue to local and national charities. Our clients, of course our clients are at our heart and soul and pretty much why we work so hard and, and feel the need to. Um, helping our clients reform the way they feel about themselves. Reform Salon has a comforting yet upbeat atmosphere, maximizing the stress of the day, melt away as clients enter our space. Um, our clients can choose stylists to specialize in specific needs and their hair goals. And we also offer silent services for anyone who just wants to decompress during their time and not feel that stress or pressure to, to talk with anyone, which is really great for hairdressers too. 
<laughs> Let's talk, but we'll go to some changes later. Education space. So we were blessed to find our beautiful our home in the beautiful right corner of the Times Building, and it deserves to be shared. Our 900 square foot space is open for continuing education, including independent educators and industry support. And our space is also available for any kind of community gatherings. Future goals to incorporate uh, healing modalities into our hair services, including Reiki, energy work, anything like that. I'll be looking into that I think this, this coming year. Um, having an apprentice program, an education curriculum for new stylists, and um, maybe eventually having another location for strong friends. Love that area. Uh, but having two locations in one. This is a hard one, kind of, I guess, because I'm just beginning and starting out. But um, definitely, we need help with uh, obtaining financial resources to build staff, um, outsourcing, so I can put this in stylist clients and build uh, business building, social media, payroll, marketing, uh, spread the word about Reform Salon and our values, ways to create amenities to make it easier for small businesses to thrive downtown. Has uh, what, ooh, downtown has so much potential. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to see more of the community utilize the mainstream. So we do. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. All right. And we also, um, if you are watching on Facebook Live, please feel free to put any questions for Heather Lawson in the comments and we will read them out loud. Does anybody here want to get us started with questions for Heather? You've been in the Times building since March? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, it's such a crowded building. Like, <laughs> like, do you go in there for anything? Not unless I knew something was in there. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I actually love about it. So Steve Aquino acquired the building. <laughs> right. Two, I guess it'll be two years in February. Um, and I just, I don't know. I guess it's just cool to have, there aren't any of the client-based businesses, as mm -hmm. far as I can tell. And it's neat to see more people kind of coming in and like, oh, we didn't know this building was here. Right. You, know, yeah. you drive by it. Thousand times. What you floor know? are you on? Second, the second floor. Yeah, yeah. 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 upstairs. Okay. In the back of the building. Okay. Field trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm at that stage where I'm going gray. I'm doing away with the color. So, so I many some people are. So many people are. And there are many ways to do it. Yeah. Um, we'll talk. <laughs> Chris. So what's what's the process look like? Because. I'll be honest, like, I mean, this has been my haircut for a long time, or some version of this. But, you know, all of the sort of openness of your model is kind of intimidating to me. Like, so, like, I walk in the Great Clips, and it's like, you know, just, it's a, it's a you know, zero and, like, two or something. Right, right. And that's it. And that's your usual verbiage. That's what yeah. you're saying. That's yeah, and right. so, how would, but I love everything about your model. Yeah. How would it look if I walk in? To, like, how do I get started? So they don't accept walk-ins. So it's okay. all just um, the appointment based. So then we would have a consultation, and, and it really isn't that much different, except it is appointment based. Um, you can book online, and yes. we have a, a good con con consultation before we do anything. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Can you go back to the last slide, please? Okay. Yep. So um, I'm curious, is, is this, so this is a new business model for how to charge and how to compensate? Yes. Okay. So it, are there any softwares out there? Is there any documentation? You say no non-competes. How, how have you put this together from a business sense of, oh, you're a new stylist. Here's our process. Here's our compensation. Here's the little agreement that you sign that you'll be in our space. Do you have all of that already put together? So I have some of it put together, and there is no agreement. We don't. There's no like written agreement um, for the space. But I'm putting things together slowly. Is that? I think I understand your question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, you're, you're figuring out the the model, and and where where I'm going is you're you're cre creating this new cookie cutter. Yes. 
And right. so then that you could potentially uh, trademark and license well, out to others who would like to use the same model that you're building? So I did not create this. I have a coaching company. I think I should put that in there. So a coaching company called Destroy the Hairdresser. That this is something. <laughs> I know. That's not positive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, but it is. It's destroying old, um, just the old, the old way of cooking. Old right. Um, but it's their concept. So it's just destroy the dress. Destroy the hairdresser concept salon, and these are all of our concepts, or all of their concepts yeah. that, that we use. And so okay. that answer your question. Well, it does. I, I've just been wondering, in, in you building your model, it's already the the basis is a is a premise of something somebody already has put together a program yes. somebody else has put yes, together. Yes, exactly. Yep. So then you could potentially take this into other salons. Just spreading the word. Yeah, just spreading the word and. As on a referral basis, would you get any compensation for that? Oh, no. So they don't have no. any kind of an affiliate no. program on, Not that. yay, you took our model and made it, and then, you know. The, the whole idea behind Destroy the Hairdresser is trying to change the industry. It's not, they're not trying to get compensation. Except you can hire them as coaches, and they will coach you. So that's what their compensation there is paying them for coaching. Yeah, that's how they're making their money. Yes, so right. continue the work. Are there, I'm wondering, do you have, because um, I feel like this is not only a model for hairdressers, but this is a model for that I've seen pop up in service industries across. So is there are there groups for you to join that maybe aren't specific to, because I'm a personal trainer, for example, and like I've seen good gyms that basically operate the same way you're describing here, because, you know, um, personal trainers run into the same so probably I I anyone who's yeah. what you know, tipped or paid by clients is right. it, but are I there... haven't seen any other except like destroying the hairdresser okay. opened my eyes to all of this and okay. now I'm starting to see or hear from other people. They've been to a restaurant where they don't accept fertility or and things like that. I don't know of any other um, whatever um, like communities that <laughs> yeah. maybe talk about changing okay. Yeah. In, in as, as like a general for all businesses I have not yeah. no. But every I mean they should. Yeah, it's a good conversation, yeah, I think, to have for so service industry. industry. Yeah. Yeah. I have a quick question. Um, if, you don't, if you don't have contracts or agreements with your stylist coming into your facility, um, which is the typical thing, um, how do you handle turnover? For example, I'm new, I love your salon, I've been going to this person, and then all of a sudden they decide they're not going to be there anymore, they're going someplace else. And that's totally fine. You but not for me because <laughs> you have to follow your client. You, well, I mean, you yes, have to follow your, your and I have followed my hair stylist many, many times. Yes. So then that's your decision whether to follow that person okay. or stay at the salon. Like whatever you feel like doing, you don't do not own human beings. Oh, no, I, no, no, you know no. what I mean. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm so passionate about that because I ugh, spent too many years in very toxic environments. And is that where the toxicity comes from? Um, is like salon but, owners because I know that a lot of hairdressers have to like rent their space or sign an agreement that they have that chair for X amount of time there's and so there's many the stress of, of it. And is that not and, the same as what you're doing? The, the idea of renting a chair? Well, not renting a chair. Okay. It's a commission-based salon. Okay. It's a commission with freedom. So it basically it's like uh, having the best of both worlds where you get the commission pay, but you can also have freedom of working your own schedule instead of saying you have to be here from nine to five whether you have clients or not. That's typically how it is in a traditional commission based salon. So are the styles actual employees? They're employees. Okay. Yep, they're employees. So they're not they're not independent that come into your facility. No, okay. And and I see that a lot. You have the soul of salon. For right. All and that's wonderful. Kind of like there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I did that for six years. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. This is just a different concept. There's a lot of benefits to working independently and a lot of benefits of having a commission pay. Mm-hmm. And when you break it all down, which I was going to do in a chart, but it was just too much for the numbers. <laughs> but when you break it down, it equals itself out, honestly, right. when it comes to taxes and the way you're taxed as an independent um, self-employed person versus a commission. So, um, yeah, and we don't, I know it's terrible, but we just don't own people. And, and I hate that. No, and, and that's stylists a, feel like they're trapped and yeah. scared mm-hmm. and that they can't grow their business or go down the street. And that's why if you want to work down the street because that salon does extensions, but we don't, mm-hmm. it's fine. I mean, I remember a boss of mine once got mad at me because I was friends with another hairdresser that worked at another salon. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, the stories mm-hmm. I could tell, and I'm over it. So that's why when I found a straight hairdresser, I was just like, 
So ideally then would a certain number of stylists work for you as employees, <clears throat> but then also work as independent contractors in other salons Absolutely. around the area? Yeah. Well, then there's, so then they're still getting the, the tax disadvantages of being both. So I don't know about all that stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. If the stylist makes that determination to do so. Makes that decision to do so. Right. That's yeah. on them. Yeah. I mean, I have but they have the freedom to make that decision yeah. if they want. Yeah, okay. But can they, and they could be employees at multiple locations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just yeah. like you could have two part-time jobs. Two right, part -time right. Mm -hmm. Well, and you really are, are, you know, talking the talk, like just looking on your Facebook page, like you've shouted out other salons and mm -hmm. yeah, other absolutely. male technicians. And that's yes. amazing. And I think it goes into um, what I've seen from some other small businesses in Westminster where it's like, we just want more small business like it's okay if you open up another salon or okay if there's another boutique or another restaurant because yeah you need a little bit of something for yeah. everybody so that's really lovely that you think about it that way it's shifted my mindset so much in so many ways Evan Davis from Evan Davis Media <laughs> uh, just because I'm curious I have friends that are hairdressers as well um, so if your stylists are employees how does it work with like getting clients in there are you guys doing most of the advertisement like if I come in and I want a stylist how do I get picked like the best stylist for me or are the hairdresser or the stylist is is there a duty to get clients in for that? So it's it's kind of both, but it is freedom with responsibility. So the responsibility part is um, the salon can help uh, with that, but it's also the stylist's responsibility to social media. It's all based on social media mm -hmm. to get, gain clients' social media, getting out into the community, talking to people, etc. But the salon is there to support them with every with all of that. Does that make sense? And then if you want to choose a specific stylist or if you go on the website once i have employees everything will be listed in what they specialize in what they do what their hours are so then link to the social media so i can see yeah and like that too so they are they will also have their own social media it won't be like sarah at reform salon yeah. that. they can have their own they are their own individual person yeah. perfect nice okay could you tell us a little bit more about the products that you use in terms of like the typical sort of outcome for a low tot so they think of i've gotten my hair bleached before like can you get those same sort of results and lightening that you would with like an ammonia based product as you would with the, these low tots products? absolutely and that's what kind of blew my mind because i never i was just like you where i was yeah. like oh, how how good are these products going to be the gray coverage on the color that i use is spectacular like i i cannot get over it um, and then the amount of the less fumes in it is crazy. My clients' scalps, and I won't even tell them sometimes that I switch the root color on them, and they'll, it's two, two or three times it's happened, they're like, oh, my scalp is much different. Um, have the, the products are amazing. The styling products that I've used are amazing, and the color and the lighter are great. I mean, I don't know what to say, but it's really, if it didn't work, I wouldn't use it. Yeah. I would try something else. It's easy. And heal, it's very, like, even the color itself is very conditioned. So I don't know if I just think it's the lack of the color in that. Any questions on Facebook? Tina, go ahead. Oh, um, it says uh, hourly pricing. So in a scenario where who gets that, you know, basic haircut, mm -hmm. all I get is a basic haircut. Um, is it, I, am I charged for a full hour? So what Destroy the Hairdresser says to do and um, they, they want to make it simplified and saying if that person is there for a half hour, you still charge them an hour. But what I do is I take my men's cuts are at 55 and then an hour is 70. So typically a woman's cut typically is an hour. So that's 70. And if a, men, a men's haircut can take an hour as well. Depends on what we're doing. It could be a long man's haircut. It could be a very intricate, like... Um, something very detailed in, in a short cut that takes an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's the time. Okay, because mine always takes 15 minutes, no lie. No, <laughs> no minutes. shampoo. Nope, I don't do that either. So you don't, you just you don't trim. have any that you just trim it. No, yeah, well, basically. Well, well, just to just me, get my shape back. I have to have a minimum, so the minimum would have to be 55. I have to have a minimum for my time. Gotcha. But um, 
but and what's yeah. the value add for that? Like, so talk about like yeah. your customers. What you're doing. So you talk a lot about the employees and stuff. I know, and like I how, how you're helping them, so the value for providing them. How does that then translate to value for the customer? In terms well, of the customer experience. The so what we have the customer experience is the space is amazing. They it's very relaxing. I try to do everything possible in the shampoo room. It's very relaxing shampoo room. We have water. We have snacks. We have wine. Um, wait, wait, say that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Um, wait, there was something else I was going to say. Yeah, I, I did see that you have beer and wine. Yeah, yeah we have wine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wine. Okay. We have tea. I'm grateful. So for those who, who imbibe, they can go in and drink as much as they want. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Charged on an hourly basis. They're not the ones with the scissors in their hands, so that's okay. Exactly. exactly. So that's your value add right there. Well, and just as an example, I go in, I get my hair cut, washed, cut, right, colored. I'm there for two hours or more, yeah. depending yeah. if, you know, the, she does the whole blowout with everything. So, and so you are going for the higher end client, not just the walk in and clip type, type people that we I are. mean, I guess you can look at it that way, but it's anybody. But yeah, it, I guess you can do it that way. I don't like putting it that way. But um, it's definitely not walk ins, you know, and I think with people who make appointments, it's a different clientele. Um, right. It's okay. experiential. It is, it is an experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know going through this, it's like, God, I'm focusing so much on the stylist, but believe me, I work out fine. Well, no, so the, fo the focus on the stylist it turns is, into how yes, your yeah. service runs. I've does. been to plenty of salons where you can tell that the stylist is not happy working there, and you'll get the side eyes of looking at another stylist, and like, uh -huh. there's a tension that is very you feel it. palpable, so Absolutely. to not have that is definitely a value add, as well as not double booking That's services, because I frequently pay I for a master stylist, and then have an apprentice doing part of my services, as she's, the master stylist is doing other things, and it's kind of like, well, hey, I'm I'm like not, like I, I'd love to support the apprentice, but if I'm paying for a master stylist, that's what I'm that's expecting. What, exactly. Um, I totally agree, and that's a huge part of it. Well, um, my clients <laughs> love the pricing structure. They love it. When I switched to and got rid of the gratuity, um, it's just so easy. I think it takes so much stress off of yeah. that. Uh, I, can, I always hate it. I always hate that. You know, doing a credit card thing, and I hate that question. Um, it's just taking so much stress off of, off of that. It's a European model as well, in a sense. Yes, it is. <laughs> Branded yeah. as such. Uh, okay, well, hold on. Anybody else in the back that hasn't had a chance to ask a question? Chris or Tina, go ahead. Yeah, based on your outsourcing, your needs. Um, yeah. You know, I have you talk to the building owner in regards to signage or the city about signage and, and how to get out there. We have a little sign out there. Um, right now, it's oh, I'm kind of stressed about really marketing heavily because it's only me. I need to market to get um, employees in there right now. Uh, I do have a small sign outside of the building. Um, on that question. placard, do you mean like that kind of small size? Yes, yeah, behind me. Right here. Yeah, this guy right there. So it's tiny. It's tiny. Are your windows facing the front or the back of the yeah. building? The back of the yeah. building? Yep. Yeah. And that's exactly what I've always wanted is something that's set off a little bit. I never wanted to be like, right. Well, and on the on Main Street, it rumbles when you're on like sitting right there. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, especially in the, if you're up high on yeah. another level, all these old buildings, it shakes the whole building and the fire trucks are up high. So, yeah, being in the back makes a lot of sense. I love being back there. That's Have you been idea. able to identify other businesses here in the area who are uh, catering to your clientele, like Fusion on Main Street? Um, um, have I talked to them? Is that what you mean? Not yet. I haven't. I'm super shy. I swear to God. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to break out of my shelf with all that. That would be my first recommendation, is to talk to people who are also built, trying to build their business she in the same location. Things. I've heard good things about her. Yeah, I know somebody oh, that knows awesome her. Man. They're awesome, man. I love her facials. Well, and the fact that you're here is a really good. It is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, but even at the oyster stroll is walking down. I saw a couple people I, didn't want, I wanted to talk to. I talked to Tony and Ashley from Collision because they're right downstairs for me, which yeah. I'm super excited. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. I tried their shrimp and grits. Why is it? 
Oh, oh, I can't wish I would. I don't like the grits, but I should have tried it just Try them oh. because I'm not a fan. Okay. They have to be made a certain way. Yeah. That's why. And they've been going on about their shrimp and grits. So but it's, oh but my God. It was, yeah. so, so, so we sorry. need people talking about <laughs> like you this. the way she talks about the shrimp. Yes. We need yes. people talking about you the way that she talks You're about the shrimp and grits. Exactly. Yeah, so it's this little, I'm thinking it's so so like, yeah. it's like, again, I think it's fear because I can't. Take any more clients right now. I can very like limited amount of clients right now, and I'm so afraid to get out there so much. Oh, so your bottleneck right now is, is employees, and and so and, help us understand who would be a good employee for you. Um, somebody that's very open minded. So people have to be open minded about the concept. So my job right now is to get the concept out there. To because when I first heard about it, it took me a while to to. Mm, it's kind of weird. I don't know how would that work, and then one day it clicked. So to get the word out there, social media, um, and other ways, I can think of other ways to reach stylists, to so so to put the bug in their ear about what we do and how it works, and if if they don't think it's a great fit at first, that's fine. But down the road, they might they might click. So so it's a re-education process. Absolutely, yeah. it's a whole mindset shift, and it's hard for people. It's hard for stylists to like, oh, not want to give tips. You have to switch it. Think, okay, well, I'm charging my worth, and that's where I'm going to get my money rather than hoping that person tips you absolutely. well today. Like, it, it, leaving that in somebody else's hands is not fair. And there's the Maryland School of Beauty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could go over there. And then the, the, uh, the Vogue Tech Center. The Vogue Center. The Carol Careers. And I should set up, that's what I plan on doing too, is setting up times down there and having um, discussions with them as well. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I need, also need to. Um, work on an education curriculum because I would love to have new stylists in. That's my heart. I love newer stylists. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have time and I haven't had, I just haven't had time to set up a curriculum for that yet. And, and would you are not need to. Yeah. If you, you mean, look yeah. at talk to people. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Style, younger stylists today are different. Like they feel like with social media, they're learning so much. Um, and you don't have to take as much outside education because when you are in beauty school, all you're really learning is to pass your test. You learn a little bit of other stuff, but you really have to have other education to elevate yourself and your skills. So, to have yeah, a question and a comment. The comment is there is going to be a push over the next 10 years for youth apprenticeships in high schools. So, be aware of that. That change is probably going to come in the next year or two. Um, so, and, and the second thing is do you know what type of apprenticeship you're looking for? Because um, that's something I can help you with as well. It's just a hairdresser. Well, the, so so there's Maryland has registered apprenticeships, which oftentimes come with pay and increased pay as as skill level goes up. Um, and there's a there's a lot of paperwork and there's organizations out there that can help you. Um, you know, take advantage of like you know tax rebates for you know, paying. Again, I can talk to you through some okay, of that great. if you'd like. Yeah. Um, but if you, you, you so if you basically if you want to talk to that, just let me know. Yeah, I would love to work out that for sure. That's great. Youth and, apprenticeships. And why North Carolina? Why are you thinking of expansion? <laughs> um, so my husband and I have loved it down there for 11, 12 years. And we've always said, oh, we'd love to move down there. Or like maybe when we retire or something. And it's just this, you have just a pool somewhere. A pool, yeah. like you go there and just... It's your zen place. It is my zen place. And yeah, it's all over your website too. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have a very like uh, I want to dive into that picture. <laughs> yeah, it's a very like ocean vibe at the salon too. I love the ocean. It's it's my zen place. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but I, I there's a salon in Frederick. I can't remember the name of it, and they kind of inspired me. Where they have a small salon in Frederick, but they also have a second location like in um somewhere in South Carolina and it's another small little location and they can kind of go back and forth and have employees here and employees there so that'd be a great goal to set um, mm -hmm. to either have a second home there or whatever I love to travel and go back and forth anyway so just an idea and real quick just you mentioned fossil hunting <laughs> what is it that's fun is there it's a lot of fun. where do you go <laughs> so I go uh, around here to the Calvert Cliffs area yeah Calvert Cliffs mm -hmm. that's what I said oh, yeah Five okay. State Park and took the crap ends and then we go down there oh don't get me started um what's the best <laughs> fossil or your favorite fossil you found <clears throat> so we, oh, we also vacation at Topsail Beach so Topsail Beach North Carolina has these very 
I love my fossils there. Um, you got it done. This past year, I found my full partial of my first partial neg. So it, the root is missing, but it's just so it's the bottom two. A megalodon shark. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I have found they're called fragmodons. Oh my god. So I have found like, fragments of them, but this is the first like full one, but the root is missing. I have found. Um, I have so many. Oh, I found this amazing. Um, um, is it a croc? Well, I found a croc tooth at Copper Cliffs, which was pretty awesome. And oh, it's a um, dolphin tooth, which has, still has the root attached to it, which is pretty cool. And I'm, I belong to many fossil forums, <laughs> my buddies. So, like, I'll post, like, oh, what do you think of my this is? And then I'll get all the information from you. Um, do you have any of them on display or in your salon? They're at my house. I do want to bring some into the salon. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I try would, not to clutter the salon too much. You know? It's yeah. an open yeah. city. That's a great talking yeah. room. It is. Oh, I just yeah. get subjects. Such a bore with it, but I love it. I love yeah. it. That makes you young again. Look it how does. fun you are. I know. I know. I know. You're so and like, happy with it. And historical, <laughs> his, historic geology too. So yeah. the way, like, yeah. That jazz is you. Oh, you got. We got to. You got to meet Nona. I was just at Mona just popped in. The mayor. Why? She, she's, she's, a a geologist. Geologist. she's a geologist. Yeah. <laughs> I think I did see that somewhere. Okay. All right. No questions <laughs> on Facebook. All right. Well, we have to wrap it up and move on to community updates. Let's thank Heather Lawson. All right. Does anybody have any updates for us from the community? We can pull up a website. I guess laughing and coughing. Laughing and coughing. All right. Let's do it, Chris. Laughing and coughing. Pull up your website. I need that one. Uh, no, I haven't worked on that in forever. They need some help. Yeah, is that anybody else? When are you going to roll it out? It's not that bad. I've worked on it since the first time I worked on it. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. Just keep telling me. Yeah, not pushing. Here to help. Good to get your touch on it. Then it'll get done. So then I'm checking. Just want to start. Yeah, no, not like this. Not like this. This Friday, we are hosting a skateboard. Skateboard is born. Oh, we have laughing, coughing, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Alright, hold on guys, we have a community update here. <laughs> yeah, so they're uh, redoing the skate park over in Pine Town and they look for some input. The Parks and Rec over there. Oh, we're actually hosting the event at Laughing Coffin and, and we are wrapping off three skateboards. Nice. Oh. And uh, it's open to those under 18 for the raffle. Wow. And then we also have our uh, there's an electric scooter that's being raffled for those under 18 that we do through our donations at the center. Uh, should be yeah, I guess. Oh, I want to know. Uh, yeah, that's right. Oh. Yeah. So, so there's a raffle at the design. Yeah, there's a raffle with three skateboards for anybody, you know, the purposes through the design and everything like that. We also mm -hmm. have, we're doing pizza and drinks there as well. Um, partially sponsored by Domino's and then and then uh, we're finally ending our month long scooter raffle. Normally, like every month, we take all our donations from our donation bin and then we get skateboards or a scooter or something and raffle out to anybody under the age of 18 so they get, they get something to help them get around town. So. Can anyone enter the raffle? Or anybody from um, town? Or? Anybody can enter. Because we have a decent amount of people that come in from Littlestown, Westminster, Frederick, and stuff like that. So as long as you are under the age of 18, you're able to enter our raffles. And that's mainly just because, you know, those over 18, uh, sadly, you guys can work and get some money in. <laughs> <laughs> and so, donate. But the idea is that you're soliciting the opinions of the teens yep. who are using the park to so, get an idea of what they want in a park. Yeah, one of the right. biggest, uh, you know, complaints, you know, about some of the parks and um, the skate park in general is that uh, people didn't feel that they were able to get their opinion heard last time on everything that was done at the skate park. So the, uh, I think the kids are a little less invested in it. I think that's why they've had problems seeing some of the. Uh, it's weird. Sorry, it is a very. It's way too early for. It's, well, it's like they see, they see Parks and Rec, you know, like talking about working on it and everything, and they're not really involved with stuff like that. They come to us more and voice their opinions to us about it. So then we got involved with Parks and Rec and 
know, they see that we're working with them, and so now, now they're getting it, more involved. I'm impressed that Farms and Rec is receptive yeah. to your input and the input of the kids. That's great. Yeah, that's important. We've had some yeah. good talks with them. I mean, the, the biggest thing is getting the kids invested in this game, yeah. or getting them invested into it, because, uh, you know, a problem they have over there is, you know, destruction, graffiti, stuff like that. And I think part of that is, is that they don't feel, they don't feel involved in their community. They don't feel, you know, they, they don't feel invested in it, like I said. Um, and without that, they don't have that respect that they need for what they do over there. Do you know if they've reached out to Trump Town at all? Uh, I honestly have no idea. Okay, I mean, just because that's a real skate culture down in Sykesville. Um, I know that they're talking with, I think, so. City Girls. Nice City Girls skates. Um, sadly, I'm not very familiar with skateboarding myself. He's more of a skateboarding guy. He used to manage a skate park. That's why. I you just, did? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Many years ago. Just, you should go to the design meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am not a skater. I just, no, I mean, I, I did the management part of it. They design and skating, I leave to the experts. Um, but the Shrimp Town is a real good group of skaters and, and people that have a lot of knowledge. And uh, usually the, the skate, the Sykesville um, area really supports. Um, the skate park and the skaters down there. So, so it sounds we like we have quite a bit of skateboarders in Pontypridd. It's a very yeah. popular yeah. location. But it, there's a yeah, there's pockets of them throughout Carroll County. Yeah. The Citadel so. kind of goes all over the county, right? They yeah. do yeah. events all, all over. Yeah. Yeah. But they actually got their uh, Halloween Havoc event coming up this yeah. month too. Yeah. That's, That's what was fun. on the twenty second, I think. Where is it? Twenty third, I think. At the skate park here in Westminster. Oh, really? On the twenty. That Sunday's the twenty third. Yeah, live twenty second. Actually, they have live music. They have some really good bands. We do it last year, but we'll be open this after. So, I'm really interested in this because I grew up skateboarding the skateboarding culture in that town. Um, so maybe I'd like to talk to you guys after this because I've never. I didn't know there was a skate park in town. It's actually a like again. The kids love this. Well, they love. That there's a skate park, they want to see it kind of redone to where they can actually enjoy it. Um, because a lot of the people that visit our facility are skateboarders. Um, where their main mode of transit is uh, biking and skateboards. And is it in the park? It's it's off. It's it's right next to the park. Okay. Um, the Legion, if you know where the Legion is in Pontypridd, mm -hmm. it's what just right up the road from there. Um, it's across from the senior yeah, senior rec nice. facility. Exactly. All I know is if you're driving towards the main downtown area from Westminster and you turn right at some point and you go circle? up a couple blocks, <laughs> it's there. Like it's <laughs> it's well, you turn right on the circle and go down the main strip there, right? You okay. can cross Baltimore yeah. and run too far, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. you cross it by Potomac. Because we're good friends with Jake Roth as well. I don't know if you know Jake. But he could probably have, he's a Keswick Bell. I think so. I know there's somebody there's somebody over at the skate park that is like he actually does like skateboards and stuff. Mm. Again, I'm not too familiar with the skateboard and stuff myself. I'm more of the gaming guy. He does the skateboard recreation type of things. Um, what else? We have something else though. Um, we're hosting the Chamber of Commerce something on the 18th. I don't remember what it is. Again, way too early for me right now. Is it a PM connection? Uh, sounds ribbon cutting. Well, that's PM connection sounds maybe is close to Carol Chamber of Commerce. No, no, time this time. is a time. time oh, a time time. Yeah. Okay. Again, again, just way too early for me. I was hoping Chris Tillman would be here because he'd have more on that. <laughs> um, but that's the 18th. We have what is it November 5th? Is that the Pokemon one? Yes, there? November November 5th is the Pokemon. Yes. So we're sponsoring the 1.25k Pokemon <laughs> tournament on uh, November 5th. At the Good Game Fest. Yeah, yeah. And that's a $1,250 prize pool for Pokemon. So. What's so. something else we're doing? Yep. Um, not that good. <laughs> Just business as usual. Yeah, we uh, When are you going to post an October event calendar on your on Facebook page? <laughs> It gets asked a lot. That's a that's a Rachel. That's not that's not to me. That's not to me. That's not to Rachel. Because my son was just asking about more farms and corporate yeah, corporate. Yeah, tell tell Rachel it's October. I don't know. Well, just in case she well, doesn't. The, what she's gonna say is, well, Chris needs to sit down with me and work out with calendars. But I'm a very busy man these days. <laughs> I, I've had so many people come into the store and say, yeah, when's the new calendar coming out? And then I tell them like every day, I'd be like, yeah. It's, it's hard. It's hard. We're very guys. busy if there's so few of us. Um, it's like we're actually working with FSK on an internship. They're sending over as an uh, intern for business and accounting. I'm going to be working with them on going over all that. And then I'm also 
Find a social media and marketing kid. Yeah, we do. We do need to find one. That would be probably pretty good. They can live with Ray for or something. Mm. I'm actually going over to FSK to speak to their business and accounting classes as well, November 15th, and then their American government classes on the 16th about local government and getting involved in all that. Does everyone know that Chris is running for mayor in Tawny Town? Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. yeah. I'd vote for you if I live in Tawny Town. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to bring up too much. It's a, <laughs> as long as the mayor meetings aren't too early in the morning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an afternoon type guy. <laughs> Luckily, I think most of those meetings are in the evening. So yes. Yes. Yeah. No, that's that's where I shine. Is in the morning. <laughs> the morning. The morning is not my specialty. Did you see your logo on the banner that we have? Yes. Well, actually, I haven't seen it yet. We took it back to it so we could read through. Oh, okay. We rode our bikes. It's permitted. And Nice. License plates. And that's right, you guys. Oh, that's never, right. Uh, some of the investors who were left and talking all kind of got bikes and motorcycles to ride around with each other. So. Yeah. Nice. We, we try to have fun we with save money too. Yeah. Just save money too. Tina, you're part of the bike culture, motorcycle culture, right? Yeah. Ride or die? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we like thought about right starting a uh, laughing coffin bike game. It's in the works. Mm -hmm. but, Later down the road. Well, go at 140 when you head home because it's a nice banner to that. Oh, the, it's actually a lot of people have brought it up to us that they've seen the banner. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Laughing Coffin or any other updates? Is that it? Oh, we're doing trunk or treats uh, in Tawny Town. We're actually giving away Halloween packs of Pokemon cards for trunk or treat. Whoa, really? Days, yeah. Nice. What, what is, is that? that? <laughs> My 20, kids are going 29th and 30th, we're doing one for the uh, Chamber of Commerce Uber in Pine Town, and we're doing one with the uh, Pine Town Liquors. You're giving out one pack each kid? Or? Yeah, we have about 1,200 of them, so we can have up to 1,200. And how old does the kid have to be? Because I have a 27 year old kid. Uh, He's still collecting I mean, if they're in costume, they're at the Tunker Kid. I mean, oh, okay. I, That's the rule. I'm costume. just teasing. Yep. All right. Yeah, I think it's probably yeah, I get that October event calendar up. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Lassie. Thank you. All right. We still have like about 15 minutes. Anybody else have a community update? Quick. Chris, go ahead. Ignite. Yeah. Thank you for your job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which one looks like Carol what? Yeah, uh, Carol Pick Council. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. It is, man. It's Carol. So we are officially a week away from Ignite Carol 10, uh, which is Wednesday, October 19th. Um, six to eight doors are open at five. We have a, it's over here at the Arts Council. We have um, cash bar and food available during the event. Uh, it, we have a lot of great speakers who are, who are coming out to talk. It should, it should be a good time. Um, tickets are $15 ahead of time. You can purchase tickets uh, through that link right there or $20 at the door. Uh, the other cool thing that is happening with Ignite is that the national Ignite organization is sort of winding back up. And so one of the things that they're going to be doing, I don't know, you know who is really interested, but they're starting a marquee event. So it's the Ignite marquee event. Um, it's going to be held yearly, and it's going to be pulled from people who speak at local Ignites throughout the world. So if you're a speaker who's interested in honing your craft and in possibly having a more national stage uh, participating in one of our local Ignite events, and we plan to increase them next year, um, it is certainly an opportunity to do that. Um, there's speaking resources available now if you're um, in an Ignite uh, and there's just an opportunity to be part of the community nationally and internationally. Um, so it's, cool. it's a pretty cool, um, it, it, it's something that it kind of went you know, dormant for a couple of years during the pandemic. Um, they've sort of refocused on it and they just hired their first full-time executive director. Um, to, to start expanding it again. So we're, we're, it's, the idea of Ignite is it's a more accessible TED, 
you know, so the idea is, you know, you don't already have to be a, the best speaker in the world to get on stage. You can be a first time speaker and just be really passionate about something, get up there and talk about that thing for five minutes. Again, and just because you are a professional speaker doesn't mean you won't be challenged by Ignite either, simply because, great, you can get up and talk for half an hour on your favorite topic or an hour, you have five minutes. You have five minutes and your slides are running and that's all. And so you, you have to report whatever the information you have in that time. So I think there is, there's something for everybody it is accessible, but it also can be a challenge for more seasoned speakers. So I look forward to ha hopefully having everyone out there and have a good, having a good time. Thanks. Thanks. Any questions? Nope. Right. Anybody else have a community update that you'd like to share? Billy, haven't you done something this week? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Billy's in the house. All right, Billy, what do you want to pull? Uh, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How you doing? I just let the art council meeting talk about all these great things that we got going on too. But so I don't remember last time we were here, but I believe we'll start. I'm actually um, a speaker at Ignite. As long as Chris allows me to sit in my last minute slideshow today, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a speaker at Ignite. So I'm excited about that. Um, it's going to it's not going to be too challenging for me because as an artist, I'm used to just doing getting up there and just doing that. You know what I mean? So. I'm ready to um, take on that challenge. Um, that's all. Uh, maybe two weeks ago, we did um, the Rock, the Find Your Purpose Youth Dining Club, with, it was sponsored by Rocksaw, where we took a whole bunch of kids to um, Rocksaw Grill. Uh, they covered all of the expenses, and um, we had them teach us how to place the forks, how to put your napkin on your seat, how to order food, how to let the ladies order first. Um, not to speak over top of each other and stuff like that, but the cool, the cool. So I brought a lot. I brought so I'm able to bring ten kids a month because we're gonna keep doing it and doing it and doing it. That's um, awesome. Yes, the cool, the cool. And I'm also I brought some parents too. But the coolest thing was so this girl right here, she is yeah. one of my yeah one of my best friends who died a little while ago. That's his daughter, and she was the one that was teaching all of the kids. So she's been in my 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 crew of my family since she was a little smaller. She's about this size. Yeah, she was a rock star. She's probably yeah, her name's Nakia. Um, and her her mother is one of my best friends too. So it's cool, like I watched her grow up and now she's helping me with doing the stuff with the younger kids. So that's cool. Um and the next one's gonna be um probably end of this month and the other one. That's awesome. Yes. Yes, because I'm amazed at how many kids like have a story about Kid. Hmm. <laughs> and table manners. But also, I almost got up and went. I, I, Steve had to hold me back because it was <laughs> atrocious. And I, uh, oh my god. And a lot of a lot of kids don't get a chance to go to like you know anything outside of McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this was they mm -hmm. they some of them dressed up and dresses and all kinds of stuff. So it was, it was cool. Well, I imagine like mm -hmm. the concept of the family dinner, everyone sitting together at a table yeah, at dinner time lot, is, is all happen. but gone yeah. away. So. So it was, it, was, it was a lot. It was, there was a lot. That, like, they got a lot from that right. session, yeah. you know and I mean? it builds confidence out mm -hmm. in the world. That if you find yourself in a place where you need to sit down with people, that you don't feel like you're going to embarrass yourself or. Oh no, the they were embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> the first time around, yeah, exactly. but yeah. yes. Well, so how do you choose the participants? They all. I have readers? about seventy-five kids in our group um, officially. Unofficially, it's like a little more, so I just pick, and every month I'm just gonna pick a different group of ten. So that's just how I do it. And you're the parents? Um, the yes, the parents that want to come, some of them weren't, I didn't ask them to come, but I just guess they were hungry, so we said come on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I, so next time I do want more parents to come because it was only like three of us, and we had kids like trying to run and stuff, so it's hard to buy So, all right, next. Oh, and I learned where to put forks and stuff too, because I didn't know. I eat, I eat salad with my fingers. Yeah, yeah. that's not good. No, it's good though. Um, <laughs> so, it tastes so much better. Right after that, I won the Philanthropist of the Year award. Um, 
for the Rookie of the Year for the Community Foundation of Carroll County's um, Philanthropist of the Year Awards. So that was cool to be, re to, to, to be recognized for the work we've done this past year. Um, these are the other people that won the awards. Um, I was the only one there that looked like me, so that was kind of cool. That's still not smiling. <laughs> I got <a> pushed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, that was cool. When I met a lot of people there, and um, I, I started some new relationships with people that I met there, um, and, I, and I'll lead into that with the next um, picture, I think. No, that's Graham. That next next time. slide. Oh, next thing. Oh, he um he he, he introduced me at, at the award, yeah. so that so that was cool. Um, yeah, so I met I met um Rise of Tammy from Rise Above Addiction, uh, there, uh, who works with Hoppa and every you know different um, organizations here, and we we participated in the Running for Recovery at um Blakeville Valley, and uh, it was really cold and really really <laughs> early, so I couldn't bring as many kids out, but it was a lot. It was, this was um the, the memory walk. Memory walk. This yeah. was the memory walk, um, but it, it it was cool. So yeah, there was like. Um, different people who passed, like their pictures were there, so it was kind of cool. And I was explaining to the kids like why why their pictures were there and stuff like that. So that that was very interesting. And that's just a couple of my kids. And that is just that's Tammy and um, Tom from from Hopper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are the pictures you're talking about yep. that are along the way. Yeah. yeah. So that was cool, man. And then then we um we were at the. Uh, I actually sat with Miss um, Tina's assistant and daughter at the oyster stroll mm -hmm. right after that. Yeah, so that was cool. Um, the only thing I don't have on there is we're doing a Halloween party at um at uh, St. Paul's uh, Church of Christ on Bond Street on October 28th. That is sponsored by Rising Above Addiction and Rock Talk. So um, it's, we're doing we're having performers. We're giving away gift bag. We call them school cool swag bags. Um, it's gonna be lights. Like it's gonna look like a club in there. I have like three different artists coming up to perform. Like some young, some old. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. I think it's gonna be our best one yet. It's right here, right? Um, yeah, it's literally right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and adults are welcome to that one too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> St. Paul's UCC. Yes, but well, that's all we got today. Shoes and everything. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Bill. Anybody else have a community update they would like to share before we give you all back your two minutes, three minutes of time? No? All right. Uh, Tina, you want to send this out? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to One Million Cups. Um, we are uh, grateful that we have One Million Cups here, thanks to Graham and uh, Magic, uh, bringing it to our community. Um, grateful to Magic for hosting us. Occasionally, Startup Portal as well. We we'll put together a, 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 a field trip to Startup Portal. Thanks, CFO Rick, for, for that. Um, thanks to uh, Jeannie Bird for the sweet treats and American Ice Cafe for the go-go juice. Um, Thank you everybody for attending. Thanks to our speaker. Sometimes we have one presenter, sometimes we have two. And next week it could be you. Uh, go to onelanecups.com slash Westminster, link still works. And um, click apply to present. Um, similar to uh, the way our, our presenter today said, this is me, I'm starting a business. I, uh, here's, here's my needs, um, how can you help? That's the type of um, humble ask that we help you with. Um, there's there's no right or wrong answer. You don't have to need to know how to present. We're here to connect our community and, um, and lift each other up. So we will see you next week.